So although small and electric, uh, it basically works on exactly the same principle as the um, petrol chainsaws that I've got, which is basically, you've got a bar, chain, and a power source. Uh, so what comes in the box, you've got two 24, 24 volt batteries, you've got the unit itself, you've got the chainsaw bar, which goes like that. You've got a finger guard there, which is useful when you're knocking against things. Uh, there's your charging cable, and I'll show you later, but basically that just plugs into the, that goes green when it's charged or red when it's not charged. These are both fully charged now. And then you've got your chain guard there. Right, so let's get it set up. First things first, put the chain bar on. So you can see that just screws off. Uh, should be able to just pop it on there. And there's a guide pin there. So you just sit it in and then screw it back down. But before I screw it down, there's something that you do later. I'm going to take this off and just show you. When you screw that, this pin moves up and down. And basically that tensions the chain. So just so you know what that pin's actually for and what that screw head's for there. So let's just pop that back on there. Just gonna leave that. Let's get a chain out. And they do go in a specific direction. And there's actually a picture on there that shows you. So we just need to find that. And it's that way. So that's the cutting edge of the blade. That's the cutting edge of the blade there and it's going to go round in that direction. So we pop that over the back. That just clicks in there. Lift that off again, so it'll move up. And then, as you can see, that goes into there, that goes over there. Just ensure that the blade sits in the track that's provided with the bar. Right, that's that, oops, there's it. Just come off that. Right, so what we need to do now, as you can see, it's not going up far enough there for the pin to slot in. So I'm just going to keep the pressure on that, get the screwdriver, pop it in, and I'm going to move the pin further back. So pop that in. And it should be, yeah, it's moving back. Right, so it's popped in there now. And you want a bit of play, so you don't want it too tight. So I'm going to move it forward again now. Because if it's too tight, there'll be too much friction for it to go around. Right, so... Uh, right, that's maybe just a little bit tighter. Nope, too tight. Right, perfect. Take that off, pop the guard on. It is actually a lot easier than it looks it's just because I'm trying to do it for the camera. Right, okay. And there we go. Right, let's pop the bolt on. Nut on, sorry. Tighten it up. All right, okay, that's fine. Let's pop this in, and all you do with this is it literally just clips in. As you can see, just pop it in. Right-handed, so that'll be better. Like 
that's in there. Pop the bottom one in. That's in there. Right, okay, that's it. You can put a screw in there so you can just hang it upside down. Get the battery, as I said, these are fully charged. Pop it in. And that's the safety switch there. Just press it, it'll go either way. Press it in, and there you go. Right, let's see it in action. Right, so we've got a tree stump here, and if we just move those out of the way, so you've got it on light stuff, like that. A bit thicker, and thicker still. I don't know if you can see it. In fact, we'll do it on these. Cut straight through. And if you use the uh, either secateurs or the bigger loppers, it's not as easy as using this. This is really straightforward. Just hang it on. And it just goes through. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. Right, let's go and see on something a little bit more substantial now. Use it on creepers as well. Right, let's see it make short work of this. These are quite sturdy, these. But there's no problem in cutting through them at all. It's absolutely making this job a breeze and it just so happens to have been delivered at the right time because as you can see a bit of snowfall last night and the weights brought this tree over now normally I'd either have to get the uh, the big saw out or one of the chainsaws but not this time just going to use the little one all right so what we're going to do is we're just going to work through this now taking it off bit by bit Get rid of these big chunky ones. Right, that was perfect. And we'll do a close-up on the next one just so that you can see how well it does. So I'm gonna cut these thicker ones and then that one. And that is how easy it was. And then just going to cut this back a bit. And there you go. So I've tied it up a bit now. But uh, catastrophe averted. And there you go. As easy as that. It's all removed. What a great tool. So imagine trying to do what I'm about to do now with a petrol chainsaw or a handsaw. It'd be almost impossible. I'll take this one first, yeah? Right, just something to point out is the guard on top here. Uh, as you're cutting through something, it actually lifts up just so that you've got clearance to pass through whatever you're cutting and then drops back down again so that you've got protection at the top. Okay then, so in summary, an absolutely ideal tool. Uh, perfect around your own garden, but as I was saying, I will be taking this to other sites to use, uh, places where normally I'd have to take a pair of loppers. And when you're, when you're climbing through woods and timber, uh, and you've got to use loppers that are normally about this long. This makes such a difference. Two 20 volt batteries, so if you run out of charge, you've always got the spare one. Be careful. Um, it, although, so that's not going to start until you move the safety. It's still, it's still sharp in itself uh, and the blade isn't covered, obviously. Um, the top guard is covered. You're not going to get any kickback on it. 
because uh, it is a small blade it's a good little tool uh, definitely a recommendation for me first time i've used one of these and i've been after one for about a year uh, but it's going to save me so much hassle yep definitely a recommendation